Hello and welcome to the York Creators Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's guest is Mim Robson. Mim is an artist and workshop facilitator working primarily in ephemeral art with natural materials, often within the landscape. She creates temporary artworks ranging from delicate and vibrant flower and leaf mandalas to huge scale beach artworks. Mim also runs Keeping It Crafty, putting on creative socials, events and workshops aimed at providing opportunities to enhance creativity, learn new skills, meet new people, inspire and develop community. In this episode we chat about what it's like to create in front of an audience, Mim's approach to working in the creative arts and how that's allowed her to generate an income, as well as the importance of creating work just for yourself, simply because you enjoy it. Mim, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So I thought a good place to start off would be to ask about the rake project on the beach, because I don't really know anyone else who does art on that scale. Yeah. Where do you start with something like that? Um, so I just go to the beach with a rake and a bit of string usually, and um, just rake it in. It's not, it's, What's the string for? Um, so, well, people always ask me this, actually, how the, I make the circles so perfect. And you, you make like a compass, mm-hmm. um, but so you put a stick in the middle and then sort of attach string to it and you sort of like walk around uh-huh, okay. to make a massive compass. So, so is it all made out of circles? No, not necessarily, but circles are a good way to start because um, then you, I don't know, like I often do sort of um, things, usually I work from the middle and then go outwards um but yeah it's to be honest it's not that um complicated you don't have to do something that complicated it's just it's just that i do it (laughs) what made you want to do it um did you see someone else yeah i saw i don't actually know how to say his name andre amador or something um he does it and yeah just went and had a go and at that point I was I didn't sort of design it before now I sort usually I kind of design it before I go okay what do you actually draw it out on paper yeah I just do a sketch really I don't do anything like over complicated um but um but at first I just went and because I did I used to do a lot of henna tattooing so I thought it would be good to try and do that on a big scale because I sort of if you do a lot of that kind of pattern you start to understand how those patterns work and so um I just went and did a henna one henna style uh, sand art and and then when I went to the top and looked at it at the end I was like oh that was amazing <laughs> it was yeah. really it's it's like quite it's really exciting to see it because um you don't normally make stuff that's so much bigger than you and so what's it like obviously you put in all that effort and then the sea comes and washes it away is that really sad or is like i mean you must know that's gonna happen um yeah yeah um but (laughs) i knew it was gonna happen but i um yeah it's not i don't know i don't find it sad Um, is it a bit of a challenge like a race against time to get it yes well mainly because i'm not very organized so i will like you have to work with the elements so um main thing is the um the tides obviously so um if you get there too late then you it looks like you've got time and then right at the end everything <laughs> goes wrong and mm. the... that could be a cool picture though when you're <laughs> yeah. nearly finished and the sea just comes yeah and, goes, no. No. <laughs> and yeah it's that sometimes it's stressful because like i get towards the end and you if you're near the end of something then you really want to finish it. If you're sort of like nowhere near the end, you think, oh, well, never mind, it's fine. But um, So what do people say when they come past and you're there doing that? Do people giving you really any comments? It's really mixed. Like, um, some people sort of like obviously look and, <laughs> yeah, they look, but then when they actually walk past you, they look away like they're not interested, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, I don't know if that's like a really English thing, but I um, don't know. But then on the other hand, you get people that um, who I had really funny ones, like um, I was doing it at Humminby and they, there was a woman like uh, just started shouting at me <laughs> from the cliff, but she was like really excited. And like... <laughs> So that was nice. And then one day I did it, because um, usually where I do it is at Humminby. And 
Although I've stopped there now because um, the beach changed loads after Beast from Leeds. So this is another thing that I've sort of started to realise is that obviously the beach can change overnight, but it massively changed after the storms because um, there's just like loads of pools of water in there. So I don't do it there very much now. But um, but yeah, when I was doing it, that was it's it's pretty empty. There's no one comes past. Um, so are you someone that's quite comfortable creating art in front of other people? Because not everybody can well, do no, that. Well, no, like, not really, like, because I, I did it in Tynemouth in King Edward's Bay recently, and I think this is because I hadn't done it for a while. I felt so nervous before I went. I had to really force myself to go, and I think it's because um, you sort of putting yourself... Nobody really cares, but you feel like you're putting yourself in a situation where you're really drawing attention to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially in King Edward's Bay, like, because um, it's like a curve and it's in Tynemouth, which is a town, and people do stop and watch there from the top. And um, once I had a, I did it once um, there, and I didn't realise there was that many people watching, but by the end there was like a whole crowd of people at the top watching and then they um when I as soon as I did like the last like stroke of it they all like gave a round of applause oh, that's <laughs> nice. just, like something I've never experienced before so from like doing something like that so it's really it's strange and but I think you get used to it actually I think I've I went through a phase of um not doing it and then when I started doing it again found it quite scary but but as soon as you do it for a few times and you sort of get used to people watching you do it and I don't yeah. know, you forget about it really it's interesting as well because a lot of people they wouldn't really say they're comfortable creating in front of other people but they find that nature is something they're quite drawn to with themes in their work but then people are kind of part of nature you can't mm. really separate them it's not like people only exist in yeah, cities yeah. people are going to be everywhere uh, do you find that you're move to make art in in nature because you do stuff in the woods as well don't you yeah well yeah I do yeah really I do because um that's what I've been doing for the past couple of years but I changed my mind a lot about what I'm doing I feel like I'm sort of moving out of that phase a little bit now but um but I do love doing that what kind of stuff do you do in the woods then so just land art type of stuff really it's kind of um people will probably know about Andy Goldsworthy. So it's similar stuff to that. So Can you explain that for anyone um, Andy, who doesn't know? Andy Goldsworthy is a land artist who is um, probably the best known land artist. And he makes um, oh, loads, of, loads of stuff, but he makes a lot of stuff with um, leaves and uh, just things from nature, basically. But um, he works with it's kind of about working with the color and the texture and stuff that you find in nature and um one of the main things about it really is that it's ephemeral so um i don't know about andy girls with this stuff because i think some of it's probably still going but um but what i do is probably um Mostly ephemeral, it lasts only a day or something, which is the same as the beach hat as well, actually. Mm. The last so you're just doing it for people who happen to walk by, or are they specific events, or does it change? Um, no, I just don't really do it for anyone. I just do it because they want to. Um, and, yeah, I think once you start, it's right, you really notice how much stuff there is to work with in nature, because it's really like a rich palette, and... Um, it changes all the time as well. So how did you get into art in the first place? Were you always quite creative as a child? Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, I went to um, a really small school and um, art was quite central to what we were doing. We kind of, it was, I think it was included in every part of the, of what we, of the curriculum really, which is unusual <laughs> now. Um, so yeah, I became quite a confident artist quite early on, and um, uh, just I, I th my mum was quite um, creative as well, kind of um, textile 
months work really um, so I picked a lot of that up um, and then eventually I went to college and did design craft so that was um, more like um, I did some ceramics and woodwork and metalwork and all those sorts of things um, and then I then I sort of stopped I don't know why but I stopped for a while um, and I did do I sort of kept like in with it a little bit because I did a bit of community arts volunteering stuff um, which actually I really liked and eventually I went to uni I went on and did um, creative expressive therapies and specialised in visual arts and that was it basically I sort of finished that and came back and just started making my own out all the time and um and then it's and then it sort of spiraled into me working as an artist and running workshops and things like that so so is that where most of your money comes from workshops and things because I'm always interested yeah. in how people do creative stuff for a living because yeah. for some people it seems quite easy they just manage to do it and other people yeah. it's like that's the thing they really want and they just can't make it happen yeah I don't really know how it, how I do it but I somehow manage it um I I think it's that I think what it is is that I do a lot of different stuff so um I don't rely on one one thing not to say that other people that aren't making much from it do but it's but but I kind of am constantly sort of starting new things because I know that it's it's unreliable and unpredictable mm. doing this kind of work so you just have to have your fingers in a lot of pies, really. Um, so I, what do I do? I do, I, I do my own art stuff. So I kind of have um, prints and cards and stuff like that to sell, which I sometimes sell at things like open studios or events that I'm at, or I'm sort of going to try and. Um, them stocked in shops and things now as well I think um and then I sometimes put on sort of workshops if I feel like it and <laughs> um sometimes yeah I can make some money from that so especially I work a lot for um another artist um called James Brunt he runs um Responsible Fish in UK which is an arts organisation um, and I run a lot of things like um, I run camp cardboard sessions for him which is where we build um, like a world out of cardboard boxes and um, yeah it, it, that again just only lasts for a, a short time and we take it all down again <laughs> but um, So how do you stay on top of all that because there's yeah, quite a lot of things to manage yeah, cause I do keeping it crafty as well. I've started yeah. that. <laughs> so yeah, so I run, I'm and that's getting busier now. Like I'm doing loads of events and. Is that every month? Social, yeah, yeah, more than once a month now because um, I have a monthly social, and then I've started like a monthly mums and dads and babies social. Cool. And then. Um, I've got a few sort of like others that are one-off events that I drop in as well. So, so you're doing all these events, how how do you market them? Because that's often what people have said to me, like, oh, I've got this idea for this thing, but I don't know if anyone's going to come. I think it's a mix of things. I think that um, I've been quite persistent and I've also maybe got to know more people and um, I... Yeah, I, don't, I think I've probably got better at... I've learned how to use stuff like Photoshop um, to make stuff like flyers and make things look better when I'm trying to sort of promote them, I guess, and um, gradually got things like a mailing list and sent these things out to people and stuff. But um, but I, I don't know, I feel like it's changed a bit in York as well. I just think that um, people are more... Um, people are engaging more 
in stuff that's happening. Are you finding that or not? Are in we pockets, maybe not? yeah, in, in certain um, areas. So like the Filmmakers Coalition is a good example because mm. that's been a Facebook group for quite a while and there's been a few active people, but not many. Mm. And then we started doing meetups for them in like April or May. And there's been tons of people come through it. It's not always the same people each time. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that means that we should be doing more to retain them. But there's always people interested in coming along. And then that's always the thing as well with monthly events, that if someone's busy on that one day, then you don't see them for a month or two months. Yeah. And you think, oh, did they not yeah, like yeah. my event? But yeah. maybe they're just busy on that yeah, day. Maybe. I have that all the time where I want to go to someone's events. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm already doing me something. Well. It's like they're going to hate me now because I'm not going to their event. And that, I feel the same. There's so many things going on in York at the moment I think it's really exciting like people are putting so many things on and um they're all really good and I, w- I want to go to them all and there's people that I want to sort of support what they're doing as well but but I'm trying to do loads of stuff as well <laughs> so I don't ever have time and so I'm hoping it uh, exactly what we were talking about earlier that um I'm trying to maybe do a bit less or yeah not not do so many different things so that it's easier for me to keep track of the things I'm doing and then have free time to go to things and I think that's something every creative struggles with or every yeah. busy creative struggles with how do you choose which of the projects that you want to keep because that's something I wrestle with all the time. Like yeah. my journals, it's like, okay, I'm going to stop this two days later. Oh, I'm not going to drop that. I'm going to drop this one. Oh, I, I can't drop that one because of yeah. this. It's... Yeah. Um, how do I, I don't know. I think, oh, well, occasion. well, I think what happens is that I do loads of stuff and then about every six months I have some kind of meltdown, total meltdown <laughs> and realise that I'm doing too much stuff and um, I get, um, I usually get ill, I usually get a cold or something and then, and then I have to, and usually it's as well like around a time where I've, I've really like planned too many things in um so then I have to cancel loads of stuff and and then I feel like I, I hate to cancel stuff and so that makes me really have a look at myself <laughs> and think what am I doing and why am I, why am I doing these things and I, it makes me really reassess. It's not really the healthiest way to do it and I'm trying to like actually um, just be more, learn from each time that that happens and be more careful about not planning so much in or not agreeing to so many different things but it's hard though when you get excited about yeah. things and you think oh, I could do that because yeah. I've got this bit of free time on a Wednesday night but yeah if that Wednesday night's your only time off eventually like I'm, get so, a bit burnt out. I'm getting this sort of thing where um when I'm looking at my calendar so I'm doing this at the moment where I'm planning for the next year and um there's a few options for me to do some stuff and I could do like um, a few dates in a row of something and fit something else in the middle and I want to do that because I want to do it all um, but then I have this sort of like slight feeling that it's going that's going to be a mistake and it's potentially going to turn out to be a bit of a nightmare um, and what I'm starting to realise now is that usually that little like sort of little um sort of voice of doubt is usually right (laughs) it's usually it's usually me thinking yeah that's not sensible thing to do and I should be more sensible really but um so I'm trying to listen to that a bit more and not just plan it in anyway because you you end up being quite hopeful as well don't you like Mm. you think oh and optimistic about it and be like oh yeah I'll manage that if I'm if I sort of stay really organized I'll manage that but it's hard to be organized all the time and I'm always getting behind on all those things that sort of don't have deadlines it's almost as if there's like two parts to it because for me I have there's so many things I want to do because I'm really passionate about it and then if I feel I'm doing too much I feel like I can't keep doing this one thing because it's stopping me from doing another thing. 
and then that's like one level of it and then there's another level which is kind of deeper which is like sometimes I just lose my drive completely yeah it's like why am I doing anything is this all pointless yeah and that I find much harder to kind of get back from because it's not like I yeah. want to stop one thing to do something else it's just I want to do nothing yeah that's... and when you're in that like how how do you get over that oh yeah I had that actually um I don't know when it was it was f- earlier this year and um it had been like maybe a year that I'd been working for myself and actually I'd really enjoyed it all but then um I got really stressed I was doing lots of different jobs and um some of them I wasn't enjoying that much and um some of them I was finding really stressful and and then it's just that that pressure you put on yourself to do things right and all of that um and I, th- I just started to not, I started to sort of relate um, the feeling of stress with making art, which is really something I wanted to, when I realised that I was doing that, I was like, I have to stop this before it goes any further because I think you can really taint something um, by allowing that to um go on and I find art making art is one of the healthiest things that I can do and that and that's really why I started making art when I finished uni because I I totally crashed after uni and had quite a difficult time um and I ended up just making art and that was the thing that started to make me feel better and um and I sort of had this funny realisation where I was, because I wasn't really feeling well enough to work. Unfortunately, I was living at my dad's. Um, so I was sort of able to not work at that time. And um, I thought, right, I'm going to keep making art until I feel well enough to get a job. Because <laughs> um, I thought, this is helping me feel better. And then I realised, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I should just, if this is the thing that's making me feel healthy, then should make out my job because then I can just be healthy doing the job <laughs> and feel well and stuff so um and not use it as a thing to try and recuperate from but just sort of thrive in rather than mm. so I think that's an important realization that a lot of artists get to and I think it's it's one of the things of being an artist it's questioning things isn't it saying yeah. like actually why am I why am I doing that or why would I do that? And kind yeah. of thinking it through and then yeah. designing your life as well as designing bits of art. Just yeah. thinking like, oh, if I can live artistically, I'll probably be happier. Yeah. Well, I, I also looked at the thing that I'd done and I'd, I'd be, just prior to the doing, having my meltdown and looking at my life, um, I had been increasingly cutting out pro, like projects that involved collaborating with other people and also um they were just for fun and weren't kind of providing an income because I just felt like I had to work so hard and I just didn't I needed to focus my energy on um making some money and just making an in- income and and not getting it's just so easy for me to get distracted and I and was trying to n- maintain focus on my work um and I realized that that was right at the bottom of the list of things that was I was obviously cut out so much that I wasn't doing it anymore and I had this realization that actually that was so much more important than I thought it was because working with other people and doing things for fun and for no reason really apart from that I want to do it it keeps you like energized and inspired and um those are the things that help you do those things that are like you hate doing <laughs> like yeah. I really hate working on computer I have to do a lot of it really but um but I don't like doing it and so I did start to cut down what I could but I also started to introduce more just fun projects and collaborations and 
things like that. Um, so what projects are you working on at the moment? Um, so I'm working on a project, an installation for a, a charity called IDAS, which is domestic abuse um, charity. Uh, so I'm working with Hannah Davies, the poet, on that. So um, she's kind of writing a poem and I'm doing like, the visuals for that. Um, and I think that's going to be touring around Yorkshire from the 27th of November. Um, and I'm in my own work, I'm sort of starting to change uh, direction a little bit because I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing the beach stuff because I'm still quite I wanna. I've got ideas for what I want to, I want to do some stuff with fire. Cool. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I'm going to do some stuff with that um, over the next few months. It's the best time to do that because we're dark nights. So, um, and then, um, yeah, just I'm sort of, otherwise I'm moving a bit away from the land arts for a bit, I think. Um, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, Are you doing any more stop motion stuff? Yes, stop motion. Um, so I'm doing stop motions with Jay Silence, um, and we're just, just Jay's sort of got his degrees in animation. So, um, and I've always wanted to do stop motion, but I can do it like to a basic level. But I need some expertise to make it look good so we work together we've got a few ideas of what we want to make so if people want to find out more where's the best place for them to go if you want to find more about the sand art and the land art and all the art then go to mim robson artist on facebook or instagram if you want to know about the events uh, like the socials, the Keeping It Crafty stuff, then go to Keeping It Crafty UK. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs>